Welcome to PC with Kids Tech Talk. Today I'm looking at the Intel Core i7 980X, the extreme CPU from Intel. This is their top of the line flagship desktop CPU. It is currently the fastest one available. Inside of the box here, it comes with some uh, thermal grease and a new default heatsink fan um, that is really a huge improvement compared to the original ones that are a push pin and they were flat. This one here, I'll take it out, is a tower version and uh, it's very decent with four copper heat pipes in that U shape. It's got a nice um, uh, fan on it and um, you can see the quality of it. Even the uh, cord there for the uh, four pin CPU um, connector is, is uh, thick and there's nothing really to complain about. If you even want to overclock it with this fan, you're going to do pretty good uh, with that. So looking at the CPU, this is a 32 nanometer architecture, so it's obviously using the smallest uh, available today. 32 is the way to go using the Westmere architecture. It's um, got six physical cores. It's got 12 virtual processing threads. Okay, so it's hyper-threaded at 3.3 gigahertz. It's got turbo mode enabled so that it can kick up to 3.6 when needed by itself. And it's a 130 watt CPU, so make sure that if you're going to overclock it further that you get a better, um, a better heat sink fan or water cooling. Now, I've got turbo mode and all these different features which are on auto in the BIOS. When I installed it here on this Asus P6T SC motherboard, um, I did upgrade the BIOS to the latest just in case and you can see here all of the other components that I'm running on the system so that way I can overclock it and uh, run some benchmarks. Now here in CPU-Z right now I did not overclock anything. It's running at the default uh, auto settings in the BIOS 3.3 gigahertz with turbo mode enabled. As you can see it's kicked in to 3.4 gigahertz by itself and it's adjusting um, accordingly to the demand okay so I'm not uh, overclocking nothing and it's running now at full load because I've got prime 95 running in the background as I'm recording the screen and you can see here the temperatures when it's at idle as low as 25 degrees Celsius and on full load it goes up to maybe 57 and the fan speed is running about 1400 rpm okay so this gives you an idea about how it runs at default okay and how much it's actually using and doing at those speeds with turbo mode enabled now of course if you overclock it to 4 gigahertz uh, which is what I did then the fan is gonna shoot up to 2200 rpm the um, power requirements are gonna go up okay it's gonna use more energy more wattage and dissipate more heat so you're gonna make sure you got some decent cooling now, to overclock it, I left the voltages on auto. The only thing I did was increase the multiplier to 30, okay, and then left everything else exactly the same the way I had it when it was on default. So I did not go in and manually change anything. I did increase the voltage for the RAM, though, a little bit just to keep it stable. But other than that, um, quick and easy 4 gigahertz, just increase the 30. Now, running benchmarks in Everest here at default clock speeds you can see the read write copy and the latency and all the other results that I'm getting again at the default clock speeds with turbo enabled if I overclock it to 4 gigahertz and turn off turbo so it's locked in at 4 gigahertz you can see here how the read write copy and latency everything has increased in speed and performance okay so this is definitely going to give us more performance better scores in my benchmarks but I did not change the RAM so in 3D Mark Vantage you can see the CPU score here is 32681 so that went up okay and every benchmark that I did if you compared the um, default clock speed scores to the overclocking scores it goes up and you can see here the CPU score from 32681 it went to 37049 huge increase there just by increasing the multiplier from the default to 30 times. So um, not bad at all. Same thing with PC Mark Vantage. The gaming suite, for example. Okay, if we look at the gaming suite results, it went up about a thousand points just by increasing the CPU. So definitely more performance there. SI Sandra, the SI Software Sandra benchmark, 
another synthetic benchmark program here comparing against other Intel Core i7s which obviously cannot touch this CPU at all when it comes to the gigaflops and the processing and the calculations that it's capable of doing with 12 threads obviously this is going to give me the highest scores and um, and beat everything there that's um, that SI Sandra has in its database to compare against now when I ran Cinebench for the CPU scores at default you can see here 8.99 was the score compared to 4 gigahertz which is 10.25 okay so if I um, overclock it it would be higher Stalker as you can see here I've got a game that I ran some benchmarks on and this is using DirectX 11 and, and on ultra high settings of course on two different resolutions we ran uh, benchmarks here to compare and see how many more frames per second can we get just by increasing um, the uh, CPU frequency for example so here it is a default uh, stock settings with um, ultra high settings as you can see at those two resolutions and at those two f uh, frequencies so at 3.3 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz we've got a difference a jump in increase when we increase the uh, CPU to 4 gigahertz and overclocked it anywhere from 5 to 10 more frames per second terrific results there and of course nothing can really touch it when it comes to the performance that it gives right because we're talking 32 nanometer architecture, 12 threads, 12 megs of level 3 cache. Um, we're talking about a lot of processing power for this, and that's why it's more expensive. It is the fastest desktop PC CPU on the market today. So I definitely would recommend this type of CPU for someone that's doing heavy rendering of graphics calculations, and um, you're doing a lot of multi-threading processing of the CPU, and you want to balance uh, the processing over all 12 virtual processing cores basically um, with the applications and games and stuff like that that we have we can really never utilize the full potential of the CPU yet uh, so it's it's overkill but obviously if you're into creating a high-end PC and you're doing lots of um, processing on it then this is the uh, CPU this is the way to go and uh, as you can see here I'm really forcing it to go at uh, at over 70%, but it's a it's a workhorse and it's a beast for sure. Definitely recommend this for a high-end PC, top of the line, if you're looking into that. And uh, I'd like to thank Intel for providing it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.